Hi, everybody. My name is Will Shabun, and I'm a member of the Regina chapter of the Canadian Aviation Historical Society. What you're about to see is a slide presentation I put together about my visit to the Aviation Nation Air Show at Nellis Air Force Base near Nevada in November 2019. Uh, it was presented to our chapter of the CAHS in late September of 2020. Now, I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Las Vegas, but suffice to say that Nellis Air Force Base is on the northeast edge of the metro area astride the old highway to Salt Lake City. Uh, it's a fairly remote area, there's no question about that. I'm a bit of a transit buff, so I made a mistake that I do not want you to repeat when and if you ever go to this air show. Do not take a bus from the Las Vegas Strip to this air show. It takes a long time. You have to get off and march about, uh, let me think, for two hours through the desert. Now, I always like to start off presentations with a kind of a, a Canadian angle to things and I was able to find one and it revolves around the bombing and gunnery school during the second world war at Moss Bank, Saskatchewan and as we can see by this entry from its its daily diary one day in the summer of 1941 two T6 Texan aircraft circled and landed at Moss Bank and out came three officers two American and one British it seems that at that time the U.S. Army Air Corps was putting together a bombing and gunnery school at Las Vegas, Nevada. And given that Canada had about a one-year head start on the United States, they wanted to come and see how we were doing it and learn from our, our mistakes and from our, our little triumphs. So to that end, we have a link between Canada and Nellis Air Force Base near Las Vegas. When it got running, Nellis Air Force Base specialized in having these T-6 Texans with machine guns in it because the school taught aerial gunnery. Uh, as the war went on, aerial gunnery became a, a less and less needed skill. And the base transitioned to aircraft like the F-80 Shooting Star uh, as a tactical training aircraft. The base itself is named for Lieutenant William Harold Nellis, who was raised in Las Vegas and killed on a ground strike uh, support mission in December 1944, right around the time of the Battle of the Bulge. As time went on, more and more aircraft came to Nellis Air Force Base, including the Thunderbirds, the US Air Force Air Demonstration Team a very familiar site at Nellis Air Force Base all throughout the 1950s and 60s was the Hun, the North American F-100 Super Saber. Now, if you're gonna go to a future Aviation Nation Air Show, and there will not be one in 2020, though there may be some in the future, uh, my advice to you would be to rent a car and get onto the interstate, Interstate 15, and head north and east from the Las Vegas Strip. Get off at the assembly area, which is the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. From there, you get onto buses. As I said, I made the mistake of, of walking from the end of the transit line across the desert for almost two hours in heat that was about 27 degrees. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge, and I found myself grumbling that I had not had the, had the good sense to either rent a car or find an Uber. But by the time I was here, it was a little too late, so learn from my mistake. I became painfully familiar with the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, which was where people assembled before going through screening and getting onto uh, buses chartered by the U.S. Air Force for the base. You could not drive directly to the air show. You had to go to the Speedway Park and wait, in my case, about an hour to get onto uh, uh, buses. And then, only then, would you be taken to the uh, air show. Gives you an idea of uh, the size of the crowd that was waiting when I got there. 
this was the, the gentleman who was uh, in front of me. And I think all the civil engineers in our membership will get a kick out of uh, his t-shirt, Eat Sleep Engineer. While we were waiting, there was plenty of aircraft to watch, including this uh, H-60 helicopter with uh, the markings of a search and rescue unit from Nellis and a C-17 and a KC-135 that were orbiting the base and the, um, and the bus area. It was pretty impressive, no question about that. Finally got onto the base, there was no charge to, uh, to, to access it. And one of the first things I saw was this F-16 in, I guess you would call it computer generated camouflage, sort of the, the US Air Force equivalent of the familiar CADPAT in the uh, Canadian forces, very striking. I draw your attention to the structure uh, to, the, to the right, on the right hand side of your screen. Because summers in Nevada can hit 125 degrees Fahrenheit, Nellis Air Force Base has had to erect a number of these shade facilities on the active apron so that the ground crew working on aircraft would not be burned by the superheated skin uh, of, the, uh, of the aircraft on a, on a hot summer day or even a hot autumn day. It is a very warm place, no question about that. The next one was a, an F-16 in more conventional U.S. Air Force markings. I draw your attention to the um, tail code WA. That's the tail code of the U.S. Air Force's 57th wing, which specializes in training tactical aviation and maintenance personnel to uh, practice their trade. According to the base website, the 57th wing has about 12 different training squadrons and about 2,300 maintenance personnel, a huge unit by the standards of, of, of any Air Force. Here's an A-10 from the same formation. And something that I really wanted to see, a Lockheed F-22 very striking aircraft. It looks almost guppy-like with that uh, uh, burly forward fuselage. A little down the way were these uh, U.S. Navy F-18s. Here it is one from a different perspective. And something, another aircraft type I really wanted to see, the F-35 Lightning II. Hot topic in Canada and all over the world. This is a B-52, of course, and the tail code tells us it's from Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota. Something I did not expect to see in the middle of the Nevada desert is this uh, Boeing P-8, which of course is a Navy version of the Boeing 737 configured for anti-submarine work and maritime uh, patrol. The uh, mountains behind this aircraft give you an idea of the type of terrain around Nellis Air Force Base. It is totally bleak. Uh, there is precious little human habitation to the north and east of the base. So tactical aircraft are able to do um, a lot of low level operations without disturbing anybody. Of course, to the northwest of the base is the famous or, or infamous, depending on your perspective, Area 51. And um, farther out still is uh, Naval Air Station Fallon, where the uh, Navy does a lot of its tactical training. I mentioned that D-52 from Minot, and here is somehow uh, a Twin Huey UH-1N that found its way to Nellis Air Force Base all the way from Minot. The uh, tail motif was included for my friends in Saskatchewan, Rough Riders. Rough Riders is not only a buzzword in Saskatchewan, but in North Dakota too, as sort of a salute 
to the cavalry unit that was raised by Teddy Roosevelt for the Spanish-American War at the end of the 1800s. What would be an air show without a C-17? This one, according to the uh, insignia on the tail, is from Altus Air Force Base in Oklahoma. Here is a C-130, I believe that's an H model, and I draw your attention to the unusual antennas and bulges on this aircraft. The uh, crest on the tail tells us that this aircraft is from Air Combat Command, and DM tells us it's from uh, Davis Moffin Air Force Base near Tucson. I looked it up, and this is a regular force combat search and rescue formation. Here is a U.S. Air Force RC-135. The tail code OF indicates it is normally based at Offutt Air Force Base near Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, worthy of note is, again, the amazing array of antennas and sensors. And those two, the, uh, the package, the, the bulge, I think they call it a cheek bulge, uh, on the forward fuselage for special electronics. Now, just as Canada uses the Beach Raytheon Harvard II, the U.S. Air Force uses the very same aircraft for its primary training work under the name of uh, T-6 Texan II. Here is a Northrop T-38 Talon from one of the training formations in Texas. And frankly, there are so many of them, I've, I've kind of lost track of, of which is which. My understanding, incidentally, is that this aircraft type is not long for this world, as the U.S. Air Force is very close to placing a, a huge contract for a, a replacement aircraft for the T-38. You meet the most interesting people at an air show, and this uh, security guard was was typical she was about five foot two maybe five foot three my youngest daughter would have towered over her as as if a giant but there was something about her uh, i think police call it uh, command presence that just inspel instilled respect uh, i suppose the nine mil beretta and the large dog would have had something to do with it but it's a good example of what military training can do to take a young person and give them a kind of personality and a kind of bearing that you don't get from anything else. This aircraft, uh, an F-15, commemorates the uh, terrible massacre uh, near at the south end of the Las Vegas Strip in, uh, what was it, 2017. In looking at this photograph, I have to admit, I can't say for absolute sure if this is a a real F-15 or if this is some kind of a maintenance trainer or, or something, the um, the absence of tail codes uh, on this aircraft strikes me as a as a bit strange, but you never know. In any in any event, it's a very interesting scheme that commemorates a very tragic event in a in a great city. Armstrong Flight Research Center is the inscription on the forward fuselage of this little aircraft. I'll be darned if I know what it is, and if anybody can enlighten me, I'd be, uh, I'd be most grateful. I had just bought a new camera before this air show, and, and when I was um, hanging about the, uh, the, the fence on the apron, I noticed these two A3 E3 AWACS aircraft sitting on the other side of the field. Whether they are in active service, whether they're there for uh, an air show, I don't know. They were uh, quite interesting. And beside them was a number of F-18s and also E2 Hawkeyes that were sitting. But whether they are aircraft who, uh, that, are, that are no longer being used or whether they're there for an exercise, I don't uh, really know. I was a little surprised to see this aircraft, this uh, 
what is the word, the, the phrase for it, UAS, unmanned aerial system or unmanned aerial vehicle or old fashioned drone that was on display at the uh, air show. Interestingly enough, there were some Royal Air Force personnel at the display next to this. I believe that they were um, at Nellis or one of the nearby bases in order to uh, learn how to use these systems. Here's a shot that I grabbed at very long distance of one of those uh, HH-60 combat search and rescue helicopters that were constantly flying during the air show. It's a much larger machine than I would have thought. At first glance, the H-60 is, one would think that it is more or less in the range of the uh, familiar old Huey. It's a good deal larger than that. It's no question about that. And it comes with, this particular version comes with a, a wide array of electronic gear and a refueling probe. Even bigger on the scale of helicopters is this CH-53 Sea Stallion from the U.S. Marine Corps in, in San Diego. It was uh, showing off how its lifting ability during the uh, show with a Humvee underneath. One of the big attractions at this show of course, was the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, the uh, air demonstration team of the uh, of the Air Force. Nellis is home to the to this team, and somewhere on the base is uh, is hangar and the team's museum. And I I have to shamefacedly confess that I got so wound up in photographing other aircraft that I completely forgot to go looking for the. Thunderbirds Museum until I it until it was too late until I was on my on my way home, but that just gives me a good reason to go back to this show. Uh, people were people were very friendly. The uh, as you can see, there was all sorts of things to see. Whether there will be one in 2021 or later, we don't know. But there's so much enthusiasm for this. I cannot help but believe that there will be more of them to come in the future. We turn now to some F-15s in the WA markings of the 57th wing. This one has uh, uh, an interesting camouflage and the aircraft behind it has an even darker form of the same camouflage. Here's an F-35 Lightning that is powering up to preparatory to putting on a dem uh, demonstration. I was really struck by how maneuverable this aircraft uh, was. At times, it, it seemed to have the ability to make 90 degree turns. Uh, I know it wasn't, but it was, it was remarkable for its maneuverability in the hands of a skilled pilot. Really a, quite an impressive machine, no question about that. There was plenty of uh, veteran and vintage aircraft on display at Aviation Nation, including this, uh, I believe it's an F-86E uh, in the colors of the U.S. Air Force. Here it is doing a fly past with a Lockheed F-22. There was also a P-51D Mustang and a T-28 Trojan in the markings of the U.S. Marine Corps. Here's a Boeing Stearman that was doing some aerobatics very handsome aircraft, magnificently preserved and maintained. It, it was really a, a delight to look at. Now, I mentioned I had just bought a new camera for this air show. It was a, a point and click with 40 powers of magnification. Uh, those lenses gives you an idea of how seriously aviation buffs in America take their, their hobby. A lot of money invested in cameras at, at this air show. Now, I had mentioned some of the antique aircraft that they were on, like this Lockheed 12. Absolutely magnificent, uh, so clean and, and not a ounce of, of oil underneath those radial engines. Really very impressive. Here's an A-37, not a T-37, but an A-37, the armed tactical strike version 
of the familiar Cessna A, uh, T37 trainer. I draw your attention to the national markings on the aft fuselage of this aircraft. It is the marking of the Vietnamese National Air Force, uh, which was, of course, flying in concert with the US Air Force in Vietnam 40 some years ago. I would have thought that these aircraft would not be uh, not be uh, suitable or not be released for for private flying, but obviously this one is very handsome and again very well maintained. Here are a couple of Czech built L thirty nine aircraft, very attractive, and they show off those sunscreens on the airfield apron to to good effect. This twin Huey, or is that a 412? I'm not sure. I guess it'd be a 412. Uh, is for works for the US Department of, of Energy. And I draw your attention to the DE in the registration. The uh, crew around it mentioned that it was used in the event that there was suspicious leaks of radiation anywhere in the Nevada testing area the uh, equipment and those pods uh, beside the fuselage would be used to try and suss out the the source of that radiation. Here's a sailplane from the Civil Air Patrol. I was trying to get my head around what the Civil Air Patrol does and it was it sounds like a cross between Casera, the civilian Air Search and Rescue Association in Canada, and the Air Cadets. That is to say, it takes young people, teaches them how to fly, but it has an additional role in helping to find uh, missing aircraft. Some more antiques, starting with this T-33 in the colors of the US Navy Blue Angels Air Demonstration Team. I'm pretty sure this is a T-33 and not a Lockheed TV-2, which is the specialized naval adaptation of the T-33 with, <clears throat> with a slightly different canopy configuration. Here's a two-seat de Havilland Vampire in the markings of the, and I suspect they're ersatz, the markings of the Swiss Air Force. Immaculate aircraft, very impressive, no question about that. Now this one threw me when I first saw it. I'm told that it is by the Cirrus company that makes like light aircraft. It is a single engined jet executive transport. It takes about five or six people, has one jet engine mounted on the spine of the fuselage and a V tail. Uh, it looks odd, but I, I I think it's entirely possible this is the, the shape of things to come because of the relatively low cost of, of having a single jet engine and the convenience that it would give to anybody who has to get somewhere really quick, quicker than you could get with a conventional turboprop proper piston engine. And I also wanted to draw your attention to this display built about a replica of the Wright Flyer. It's an appropriate way to uh, to salute the dawn of aviation in in the United States more than a century ago. On the lighter side, there are a lot of aggressor squadrons and aggressor units around Nellis Air Force Base that have captured or acquired Soviet equipment. Here's the crest of the unit that operates this anti-aircraft system. Uh, a pair of, no, I guess it'd be a total of six anti-aircraft missiles and a radar system uh, along with that. T-shirts and, and bellicose slogans were everywhere at this air show. The uh, aggressor Units seem to make pretty good money by selling uh, T-shirts talking about how smart and how tough they were. 
my favorite, or I guess the most striking one was this, the silhouette of a B-52 and then the slogan, peace, the old fashioned way. In the same vein, here's one saluting the A-10. And finally, there's this little trope I found on Facebook. Uh, I mentioned Area 51 and the Nevada testing range to the north of Nellis Air Force Base. What do you think you'll find in Area 51 and what you will actually find? Well, that's all, folks. I hope that you enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun going to the air show and putting this, uh, this package together. As I said, the uh, Aviation Nation Air Show will not take place in 2020, but the, the website of Nellis Air Force Base, Base says that another show in 2021 is a distinct possibility. It always takes place in November after what our American friends call Veterans Day, what we call Remembrance Day here in Canada. So you can time it on, on that basis. If there is not one until 2022, so be it. It's well worth waiting and well worth going to. Thank you very, very much. Uh, this is the end of this presentation. I want to thank uh, everybody for watching and Gary Williams for his help in recording this epic. Thanks. Bye for now.